Welcome to episode 18 of Bobalog. Today I will be sharing quite a few FOs or finished objects, only one of which is knitting, and I also have one new cast on. Greetings and thank you for joining me here in my little woolly corner of the world. My name is Bobby Ollan and I am a knitter and fibre artist in Victoria, Australia, where I live with my partner. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I live and create, the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people, and I would like to pay my respects to them, their elders, and all Aboriginal peoples, uh, past, present and future. I will start off today with On My Person, which I very rarely do because like I have said quite a few times before, I don't do a lot of knitting for myself, but this gorgeous top is actually a test knit that I did for Nama Ido or Naama Ido. I'm not sure how to say that. I am so sorry. But this is a pattern that I found through the hashtag Test Knitters Wanted or something like that on Instagram. So I can't remember when I did this. I didn't make note of what year this was, but it was a few years ago and I saw it on Instagram and um, I actually somehow had capacity to do it. So I, um, I volunteered for the test knit and I have this beautiful, beautiful top. So it is called the necklace top because of this gorgeous necklace like design, I guess, in the front. I, I love it. I think it is really beautiful, but because of the gorgeous lace that runs all the way down the front of it, um, I always have to wear something underneath it. So I'll give you a full look at it. I'll try to turn around here so that you can see the back of it. Hopefully I'm giving you enough of a view there. And sorry if you can hear the crinkling while I was turning around. I am wearing a, a moon boot from the toe that I broke over Easter. But anyway, back to this top. Um, like I said, it's called the necklace top and it is now a um, paid pattern that you can get through Ravelry. I'm not sure if Nama has their own site where they sell these, but I I find everything, well, I, I, yeah, I I mainly use the my Ravelry library for everything, but like I said, I did find this one through Instagram. Anyway, I have knit it in um, a lace weight yarn by Shoffel Vol. It is called Six Carat, and it is the colorway two two three five Give More Green. It's an eighty percent merino, twenty percent silk, and I believe it's the first time I had ever use silk content. Actually, no, that's not true. I did make a pair of mittens um, that were also a merino silk blend. Um, so yes, the second time I have used silk and they're the only two projects where I've used silk content in a yarn. I'm pretty sure most of the other um, test knitters did theirs in a solid color. Um, which really helped to emphasize this beautiful lace pattern as well. But I think you can, I mean, you can definitely see it pretty clearly in this um, variegated colorway that I've used. And from memory, the pattern also called for a cellulose fiber, but I was struggling to find that in the right weight yarn. I did actually find 100% cotton yarn um, that was in lace weight, but I just could not get gauge on that. Um, more evidence that I am a tight knitter. I went up several needle sizes to try to get gauge and it, it just wasn't producing a, a fabric that I liked. So um, I found this merino silk one that I think worked a lot better. Um, is there anything else that I want to say about this top? From memory, it was knit starting at the with the front piece so you work from the bottom up and then you go over the shoulders and work down so it is all one piece and then you seam the sides together 
Moving on to handy dandy, I have a finished object to show you, which are the Bernie's Big Mood Mittens by Jess Anderson. So here they are. I'm I'll put them on. Yes, I'll put them on to show you. They are big for my hand, uh, but the recipient does have uh, bigger hands than I do, um, only a little bit. So this is, like I said in the previous episode, they're inspired by um, the, the mittens that Bernie Sanders was wearing, and I quite like I quite like that design on the backs of the mittens there. And then Jess has put the words mood on the inside. Although I guess you could wear them on the outside if you wanted to do it the other way around. But yeah, I think it makes sense to have the mood on the inside of them. So these are ones that I actually knit in the recommended yarn, which was Cascade 220. It's a worsted weight yarn and uh, the pattern did say that it was going to be quite big mittens so I went down um, a few needle sizes and uh, I was worried that that would make the fabric really stiff um, and it hasn't which is lovely. It's a really nice dense firm fabric but it is not stiff at all at least I don't think so. Um, like. I've got, you know, I can just move my hands all around here like this. So the Cascade 220 is a Peruvian Highland wool um, and it's, it was just a really nice yarn to work with. It's easy to see why this is uh, one of the most commonly used yarns out there. I really like uh, the long ribbing on the cuff here. They just hang on to, um, to my wrist and forearm really snugly. Um, and I guess because they are nice and long as well, they, how do I say this? So when I made the um, Luna Love Good Spectre Specs gloves previously, I had commented that they seemed a bit awkward going over my watch, but they had a much shorter cuff. So because these ones are longer and it covers the watch completely, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's just gaping over the, the big watch face there and it, it goes past it and it, and it wraps it pretty nicely. My cousin who these are for, um, doesn't wear a watch, I believe, at all. So that won't be a problem for her. But yeah, um, I, I would have gifted these to her already if I could drive. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in a moon boot for my broken toe and I haven't been able to go to see her. So she'll just have to wait a couple more weeks until I can walk and move around normally again. So yes, that is Bernie's Big Mood by Jess Anderson. Next up in handy dandy is the Redford sweater by Julie Hoover. Um, it's a Brooklyn tweed pattern. So I think I have shown this a couple of episodes ago just to show that it was uh, a pattern that I had been considering for my partner. Um, and I showed him a few different patterns that I had picked out that I thought he might like, but this is the one that I uh, sort of had my heart set on for him. I thought it would suit him the best. I thought he'd like it the best. Um, but it's also um, the simplest looking. So I I thought I'd, I gave him some other options that had cables and things like that. And I knew he'd like the plain one, but I just, sometimes he surprises me with what he likes, like with socks. Um, he has said that he likes really bright colors that he wouldn't wear anywhere else and like, I found that that was really unexpected for me. So I thought I could be wrong about my assumption in, in sweater styles, at least for a hand knitted garment. So I'd give, give him the choice, but I was correct. And he liked uh, the Redford one the best. So from the comments I have seen, um, people have said it's quite technical um, in the construction of it. So I was really interested by that. So I, I'm kind of happy that it's a combination of all of this simple stockinette stitch, a lot of nice, mindless, easy stockinette stitch that I could just, you know, just like, 
just nut out. <laughs> um, so this is what I have done so far. Gosh, that looks really wrinkled and horrible, doesn't it? It'll look better once it's been blocked. So this is the back piece and I am knitting it in Tan Wan Coots four ply. This is their origins range in the Cider House Red. Uh, and uh, they, their yarns are Polworth wool. So that's the back piece there. I have just gotten up to the bit where I am about to do um, the shoulder and neck shaping. So it's looking quite long and narrow, but that is because it is, it's constructed in pieces, but it's not in the four traditional pieces you'd expect from a sweater, which is a front piece, a back piece, and then two sleeves. This one has the front piece, the back piece, the two sleeves, and then uh, side panels as well. And then it's all seamed together. Um, somehow. And one other thing that I thought was really interesting is the these front and back pieces are just the stockinette body. There isn't ribbing. And I think, because I only just skimmed through the pattern, I think once you seam the pieces together, then you knit the ribbing band um, in in one piece with all of them connected kind of like how you would normally do a neckband you wouldn't do that until they're all connected together so i thought that was really interesting as well but it makes sense considering this has more pieces than a uh sort of more standard sweater construction yeah so that'll be really interesting to do um one other thing that i had noticed in other people's comments is a, a few people i think had said they didn't they either didn't like or they didn't see the uh the use of having a twisted chain salvage i think is what it's called in the pattern so it's just a special way of doing um slip stitch edges if you've ever done that before i i won't explain how to do it because it is a paid for pattern and i don't want to really give anything away but i i'm i've decided to just to just go with how the pattern is written. I don't really know what it's gonna do or how it's gonna behave. And I assume that it's been done for a reason. So I'd like to learn and see and try it out. And, and yeah, just, just see if I can, if it's gonna work for me. So I'm pretty much doing the pattern as written. One other interesting thing the pattern has done that I really like as well is, so it says to, it says to knit for um, a certain length, which is normal, but then it also gives um, how many rows that should be, um, which I really like because that's the way that I normally knit anyway. I don't knit and then take a measuring tape to it and knit with the measuring tape until I actually hit the measurement that is required. I tend to, figure out what my gauge is, figure out how many rows it would take to get to the length required, and then um, knit that number of rows. So I really appreciate that the pattern has already done that math for me, assuming that you are getting the row gauge of the pattern. And I am not, but let me explain. So this pattern, I believe it calls for, I'm going to get this wrong now. 23 stitches and 36 rows or something like that. I am getting, the, the swatch that I did got 22 and a half stitches and 35 rows. And I did a decent sized swatch, not a huge one, but it was bigger than, than 10 centimeters wide and 10 centimeters um, long because I was, you know, try, trying to do it properly. But I still think people like to say that swatches lie. And I guess, you know, that is true to an extent because you, you're not knitting something, obviously, it's a swatch. You're not knitting something to the size of the finished thing. And because of the, the weight of this, 
um, of, of a much bigger piece. It is going to act a bit differently. So my hope is just that with a bigger item that has more weight to it, it'll stretch it, which will... Um, Oh, I don't know if I figured this out right. But anyway, it, it, it will stretch it so that the stitches will compress. And uh, I'm sure it will compress more than the half stitch that I need to get from 22.5 stitches and 10 centimeters to get 23 stitches in 10 centimeters um, and then increase the row gauge as well. Maybe I should just measure it before I do the next bit. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm confusing myself trying to talk about it. But yes, that's that's how that's going so far. And that has gone quicker than I expected, but I am still afraid that I'm not going to um make my deadline of my partner's birthday, which is less than a month away now, and I have only done most of the back piece. So not even finished one whole piece of it. So I really need to get going on that. So I should move on and talk about other things. Um, that's it for the knitting items. Uh, before I move on to talking about other crafty makes, I just have a tiny little eye candy to share with you. So last episode, when I was showing you the yarns I had purchased from Tarn Von Coot, I forgot to show a couple of just little tiny, not tiny, but other little things that came with it. So I did get this lovely um, note from them. Um, Dear Bobby, thank you for your order and for all your work online to share skills and info on our craft, Tom and the flock. So I just thought that was a really nice note. Um, part of me was starting to feel like I talk about Tarn Von Coot so much, um, or I have, I feel like I've been talking them so talking about them so much in all of my episodes this year and I was starting to think oh they're gonna get sick of like seeing me tag them in every bloody post but um uh, it's nice no it's appreciated I mean really I didn't think that they'd be getting sick of it really I was kind of just really self-conscious that I was always doing and talking about it so talking about them so that was really nice to get and a lovely little surprise is I also got a little gift from Uncle Noel and the flock so that little gift was this book the old you written by Noel Dennis so the Dennis family are the the family who run the Tarn Von Coat homestead so this is just a really lovely little story about one of their sheep so it is um I'll, I'll just read you this introduction here um although the old you was written as a children's book it is hoped that it may bring an appreciative chuckle to those who know sheep and an insight into the wool industry for those who don't so it's got all these pretty um these pretty illustrations which are nice and just simple sketches there's a photo of um Uncle Noel there with a sheep, I assume. Yeah, it, it is the story of one sheep, um, but you know, it is, it is a children's story. It is a made up story. So um, yeah, it's just really nice. It, it sort of touches on like significant events that may go through a sheep's life. Um, yeah, and it's just, I just thought it was a really nice little read and I was, I was really happy to receive that. So thank you, Tom and the flock for that gift from Uncle Noel. Next up is Multi Crafty. So the first craft that I will be talking about is my spinning. So here I have the latest yarn that I have spun on my 3D printed Turkish spindle. So I'll give you a close up of it there. So this one, um, like all of my other um, yarn spun on the Turkish spindle, it is a three ply. This one was done from the fold. So you get um, a staple length 
of the fiber and fold it over your finger and you're pulling it from the folded section rather than pulling ends of it. Um, so that's supposed to like introduce more air to it and create more of a woolen spun yarn. And then this one, I did two plies that were just the gray color and then another ply that was pink, very loosely mixed in with a bit of brown. I think you can see some of that tan color there. So just to show you what this uh, spinning journey has looked like, this one here um, was all in just purely the gray color. And who knows how I, um, I drafted that. It's, I, I don't really know that I had, was really paying, uh, paying attention to technique at that point. Um, and it's quite fluffy. It's the fluffiest of them all. And it's kind of interesting to see that my progression has gone from really fluffy to a lot more, um, I don't know how you would call that. It's more like, it's, it's a lot smoother. It's a bit like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe things yet, but it's, I guess it's kind of like cordish and this is really fluffy, which is interesting because I was making efforts to try woolen, but this feels more woolly and this feels more smooth. So who knows what I'm doing here? Anyway, um, this second one is the one where um, I had blended the gray and the pink all together. And I just made one big single out of the whole lot. And, uh, and then I chain plied it. So sorry, this one was three separate spins that were plied together, um, which is how this one was done as well. So three, uh, three singles in the gray applied together, one long single in a blend of greys with a bit of pink chain plied. And then this one was two <laughs> singles of grey, one single of pink plied together. So they're all three ply yarns and um, I'm going to do just a little, um, a little weave of that as a record of those first yarns that I tried to spin. So that's those ones there. The, spinning that I'm really excited to show you is what I have produced so far from doing um, the beginner spinning workshop with the spinning wheel um, with the Hand Weavers and Spinners Guild of Victoria. So the first one is this one here, this beautiful Border Lester Merino, which is done as a two-ply. I'm so happy with how that has turned out. It looks, it, I mean, it just looks more like yarn to me than these do, like more, more like a, a proper yarn. And I just love that you can see, I love how you can see the twist on that there. And this one hasn't been washed yet. All of these ones have been washed, but this one hasn't yet. I wanted to um, do some more spinning and then wash all of these ones together. So this is spun from the fleece. It is spun in the grease and it is using the Ashford Joy um, spinning wheel. And yeah, I'm just really happy with how that one has turned out. And then we were also given some raw alpaca to try out. So I had um, some more of this left on one of the bobbins. So um, a whole other single. I should show it to you actually, I've got it here in my makeshift lazy cape that is my footstool with a DPN in it. So I still have plenty on that bobbin there, even after doing um, those two those two yarns. Um, so I'll use that for another one. So this one is one ply of that Border Lester Merino and one ply of alpaca yarn. And then I plied those two together. So the alpaca yarn was a gray, I didn't keep any of it aside. I, I spun up all that I had from the class of it. Um, and then when I applied them together, it just made this like beautiful, um, soft color here. I don't even know what you would, what you would call that. 
but yeah i think i was i was really concerned actually when i was spinning them um that the color difference because it was kind of like this color difference i was really concerned that they wouldn't go together well but they've just blended so nicely i think um the thing about the alpaca is so what i didn't know about alpacas is they like to roll in the mud so that fleece was really dirty um, <laughs> Yeah, it was really dirty. Like as I was spinning it, all of this dirt was just flying off it. And then when I was done spinning that whole lot, I um, wound it into a center pool ball just to see how that would work for plying. And it, it got a bit tangled when I was actually doing the plying, but um, that's beside the point. Um, even when I was winding it onto this, um, more dirt was shedding out of it. And then when I plied it, more dirt again was shedding out of it so when i go to wash i may wash these this one without the alpaca first and then once these have been taken out wash that on its own just so that none of the dirt from this can get into the other yarns so the next thing that i am pl plant planning plying the next thing that i am planning is um i want to try this with three plies and see how that goes. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully have that to show you in the next episode. On to weaving. Um, I'm not sure if I ever actually showed you the finished product of this one here. I feel like when I last showed it to you, it was still just the long length of, um, of the raw weave. So I just, I stitched I just stitched it by hand. I folded it in half and then I stitched it by hand and just left um, the top open like that. And it's just a little fold over fringe bag. I didn't do anything special with um, this fringe at all. I just did like an overhand knot with four, um, four of the warp yarns and then I just cut them all to the same length. Um, this bit of pink here, my partner actually wove um, on the loom. So I started with this end here and I did that pink and then my partner took an interest and he he wanted to try it. So he did that bit there and then I, I went and did the rest of it. So it's kind of nice to have a little joint um, project there. And then in here, I just have um, some items for weaving. I do have to say, I probably, I'm probably going to try to line this at some point because I didn't consider how um, big this weave is and my tapestry needles that are in here keep poking through and trying to escape. So yeah, um, yeah, I think, I think that turned out pretty all right. <laughs> it's useful it, it does what I um, intended and it's just nice to have this for very first weave um, to keep with my loom and have all my weaving things in it so that's that pouch there um, the next weaving project I started and finished and gifted since the previous episode so I don't actually have anything to show um, here but I'll put photos up. So this is just a plain weave scarf um, that I did for my nephew who turned six this past weekend. So I knew his birthday was coming up and I thought that this was a, a really good opportunity for me to practice plain weave um, properly because this one I was kind of just uh, beating the heck out of it and I hadn't really um, looked into the proper way of doing things. So when I did those classes on Craftsy, I realized that um, you're not meant to be just like beating the weft as hard as you can. You wanna be placing it and to get a nice even weave, um, you want the picks per inch, it's called, to match the ends per inch. Um, so, yeah, so I, I was making more an, of an effort to do that. And as I was weaving it, I kept pulling out the tape measure and checking um, that I was getting nine picks per inch. Um, I was usually getting eight actually, but I think that's fine because um, the warp was stretched. So the shrinkage would have helped 
that eight compress more and match the picks per inch better because um, the ends per inch of my loom is nine ends per inch. Anyway, I don't want to go into too much detail about it because I've put together a really rough, a really terrible <laughs> video on that weave. Um, so if I have that finished by the time this video goes out, I'll link it. Um, if not, and you want to see uh, that progress um, from start to finish of how I wove that, if you'd like to be notified of when that video comes out, then um, please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications and um, you should find out about that soon. Um, let's see. I think that's all that I had to say about the multi crafty. Next up is eyes and ears. So in the last couple of weeks, I have watched a couple of new vlogs. So the first one is Jess Knits and Sews. So Jess is a fellow Aussie. Um, she was actually formerly a fellow Victorian, but uh, earlier this year, she moved up to Queensland. Uh, so yeah, so I were, were in um, a group of Aussie podcasters together. Um, and unfortunately I never got to meet her before uh, she moved up to Queensland. She doesn't have many episodes up yet, but I really like the amount of detail that she gives about the projects that she has done. Um, yeah, and, and she, like partway through her episodes, she has also started her own fashion label. So that was really nice to hear about and see. So um, I think I forgot to mention at the very start, but the links to everything that I'm talking about will be below. So if you want to see Jess's vlog um, and learn about this fashion label that she has started, that will be linked below as well. Uh, the other vlog that I started watching is Andrea Mowry's I'll Knit If I Want To. So if you're not aware, Andrea Mowry is quite a uh, well-known and much-loved knitwear designer. So it's interesting. She says that she only ever knits her designs because she just doesn't have time to knit other people's designs as much as she would like to. And when she tried after starting, after, after having started making her own designs, when she started knitting other people's patterns, she said that she couldn't turn her design brain off. Um, and she'd always abandon those other projects and work on her own. So I, I mean, I completely understand that part of the reason I think that I hesitated for so long to try design myself is because I there are so many other patterns out there from so many other brilliant designers that I want to try. And I knew that if I did my own designs, I'd have to put so much time into those and I wouldn't get to knit all of these other people's patterns. So that's something that I've sort of juggled, juggled. I cannot speak today. <laughs> that is something that I have struggled with um, trying to balance working on my own things and working on um, other people's designs. So that's, that's really interesting to hear her talk about her design journey and how she, how she works and how she knits and what, what she does. Um, the other interesting thing is that her vlog is purely a Q&A. So I guess because she's, you know, do, always doing her own designs, she's not really going to be showing, oh, this is the pattern I'm working on at the moment. Um, she'll hint at when new patterns are about to come out and then she'll show them to you, but she doesn't do the standard, um, this is what I'm working on. These are the patterns that I'm fantasizing about knitting and, and all of those kind of things. I, I find it really helpful that she's doing this Q&A format so you can submit questions for her to answer. And I mean, all designers are just so knowledgeable, but I think it's so wonderful that she's sharing her knowledge in this way. Um, and and I, yeah, I, I think I've said this before, but I really love vlogs and podcasts that I feel like are helping to improve 
my skills as a knitter. So I, I've been, I've really been loving um, watching I'll Knit If I Want To. So I highly recommend that one. Um, she has such a vibrant, energetic personality as well. She's like a ray of sunshine. That's, that's what I feel like when I watch her. She just feels like a whole big warm of energizing sunshine, bringing joy and passion into my knitting space. So um, I really love that and highly recommend her vlog. On to craft for thought. Uh, this is just going to be another little rambly one. I don't really have that much to say. Um, I I feel a bit scattered today because I'm a bit tired, which is completely my own fault because um, I really like reading and I don't, I feel like I don't read a lot anymore because when I do, I tend to not sleep <laughs> because I don't know how to put a book down. Um, and the, the thing with me as well is as an adult, I find that I don't often seek out new things to read. I'm always just going back to the series that I know that I love. So I do read new books here and there, um, but I, I very often go back and read series that I know that I love. At the moment, um, I am at the last I'm on the last book of a really long fantasy series and even though I have read this series many times and this happens with other series that I reread as well when I get to the end of it when it's getting all climactic and everything's coming together I I really really struggle to stop reading even though I know what's going to happen now so like all the lead up to it I'm okay I can put a book down at a reasonable hour but when it gets to the end I'm a lost cause <laughs> and it's really it's really terrible like last night for example I was reading and I could feel myself trying to fall asleep because I was so tired I do not know what time it was I try not to look at the clock because I don't want to know how late I've been reading but I was struggling to keep my eyes open and I just kept forcing myself to stay awake and keep reading until I just couldn't anymore because it's just so good and I couldn't stop. Um, so if you're curious what series um, that is, I am rereading the Wheel of Time series. I actually started rereading it last year because that um, television series came out and I watched like I started re reading it before I started watching the series just because I wanted to refresh myself even though I am so familiar with the story but um I wasn't happy with the series so I stopped after like two or three episodes but I kept reading the books and now I am near the end and I am not sleeping um so it's funny because I, I can't remember how long ago it was when I was talking again about how um, like my, my guilt over not being productive and now I'm not knitting as much because I've been more tired because I haven't been sleeping well because I've been reading too much but I love reading so much that I don't really it doesn't make me feel bad about not knitting because I am still spending that time doing something else that I really really enjoy even though it is ruining me um, but part of part of the the way that I justify reading so much and not sleeping as well is because I say to myself you've just got to get through it the, the quicker you finish the book the more you can get back to it a normal life and a normal schedule and normal sleeping patterns. I don't know if that's logical and how much sense that makes. It's It would probably just be better for me to just control myself and let the reading go on for a few more days um, and get proper sleep and get through everything else that I'm trying to do. But um, yeah, anyway, especially at this time, of my life where I feel like everything that I'm doing has a deadline. So like I said, the Redford sweater 
I have to get done by mid-June. I have less than a month to finish that and I have barely started that. Um, once that is done, so like three days after I need to gift that, um, the colours of fall knit along from the Yarniax will start and I want to cast that on on cast on day which is uh, the winter solstice here in Australia um, so I want to cast that on and then that ends in September and I'll, I want to do a sweater for that so that's a whole nother sweater with a deadline there another thing that I have due in September is um, a sweater that I and making for my mother. So I actually started it a few years ago and I only did, it's it's another one that's knit in pieces and I'd only done the ribbing and then I got caught up in other deadline knitting and that has been in hibernation for quite a long time but I really wanna get it to her for her birthday this year. So that's another deadline one and then on top of that I need to go back and finish the blanket that I was knitting earlier in the year so that I can send that off. Um, I also need to finish um, the re-knitting the front of the Greenwich sweater and send that off as well. Um, so I have all of these things that have deadlines some of them are a bit loose deadlines but they're still like they have to be done this year it's all kind of has to be done around September ish and then on top of that I also couldn't resist signing up for another test knit which is um for Katrina Walzer who is Oliphant Cat who is um an Aussie designer who is um she, she's going through the process of Re, sort of reworking a lot of her patterns for Aussie yarns which is I think is just fabulous so she has done that to um, a shawl recently she's she's rewritten the pattern for Aussie yarns and she's looking she was looking for test knitters for that and I said no initially I said that I couldn't do it because I have too many deadlines but then I just couldn't stop thinking about it and I I emailed her and I said I have to do this now, can I please? <laughs> so um, hopefully I'll be getting that pattern today. Um, and that's another deadline that I have put on myself because I just can't help it and I just can't stop myself. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's enough rambling for today. Last on the list as usual is Heartful of Craft. This may sound odd to some of you out there, but I am grateful for stockinette stitch. Big projects of stockinette stitch. So I, I know that um, a lot of people really love doing garter, big garter stitch blankets because it's just such an easy, mindless project to do. All you just do is knit and then turn it and then knit and you just like, you don't need to think about it, you just go and do it. And I, I'm, I've been feeling the same about this here. Um, not having to worry about, um, about pattern repeats or anything like that. There were a few, um, a very, very, very few um, increases on this um, about, I don't know, maybe halfway up it and then the rest of it there was just absolutely nothing. It was knitting straight and it's just been so nice. Uh, after all of like the color work and everything that I've been doing that I've had to be paying a lot of attention to, it's been so nice just coming to this kind of project where I can just not even think about it. And it's, it's been, it's been great. I'm not, don't know if I mentioned, but I've been doing this one lever knitting as well. And even though I'm more comfortable doing um, continental knitting, I somehow find that with lever knitting, I it's easier for me to not look. So I can just be sitting there and, you know, moving, working, knitting, and not even like thinking about it. With, with continental, I still have to, I like I can do it without looking, but I, I feel like, 
I, I don't, I feel like I don't completely trust my muscle memory and what my fingers can feel as much as I do when I'm doing lever knitting. Lever knitting, I, it's easy to just be doing like this. And with continental, I like, I'm more like looking down constantly. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm grateful to beautiful, simple stockinette stitch. So yes. That is my heart full of craft. And that is all that I have to talk about today. If you're still here, then thank you so much for watching this episode of Bobalog. Uh, all of the links to all of the patterns and yarns and other things that I mentioned are in the YouTube description down below. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Um, and I'd also appreciate it if you also consider subscribing to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram at Platypus Knitting and I am in Ravelry under Bobby Ollen. So you can find links to those profiles down in the description below as well. I hope that you're all doing well, finding time to spend with the people that you love and taking time to look after yourselves, relax, craft and do whatever else it is that you enjoy. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Fare thee well.